Now, what is a port? The port is a virtual location where networking communication starts and ends in a nutshell. Okay, so for more in-depth explanation, we need to establish a little background information. There are two kinds of network ports on each computer, 65,536 of each for total of 131,082 network ports. And this considers as TCP and UDP. Okay, now each computer has an internet protocol, the IP address, which is how the network knows which computer to send packets to. So if you send a packet to the IP address, the computer knows what port to route the packet to based on application or packet contents. Each service running on the computer needs to listen on a designated port. So the first 1023 TCP ports are the well-known ports reserved for applications like FTP, the 21, HTTP, 80, or as such, the 22. And the Internet Assigned Numbers Authority, the IANA, reserves these points to keep them standardized. TCP ports from 1024 to 49,151 are available for use by services or applications, and you can register them with IANA. So they are considered semi-reserved. Ports 49,152 and higher are free to use. Now let's start with board scanning basics. A board scanner sends TCP or UDP network packet and asks the board about their current status. The three types of responses are below, which is open or accepted, the computer responds and asks if there are anything it can do for you, closed or not listening, the computer responds that this board is currently in use and unavailable at this time, or filter dropped, blocked, the computer doesn't even bother to respond. So we either have a respond or without respond, or we have a respond that the port is currently in use. Okay. Now let's start with port scanning techniques. Now, by the way, this is just a general idea about the scanning techniques. We will have in depth about the Nmap scanning techniques. No worries. And in a theory way. Okay, and we will have the hands-on later on. First, the Bing scan. This is the simplest scan. A Bing scan looks for any ICMP replies indicates if a target is alive. TCP half open, a fast and common scan that requests an ACK or ACK or acknowledge packet from a computer, also called a SYN, which means a synchronization or synchronized scan. Okay. TCP connect, similar to the TCP half open scan, but the TCP connect scan completes the TCP connection. UDB, which is slower than TCP scan. A UDB scan works best when you send a specific payload to target, such as DNS request. And we have the stealth scanning, quiet and unobvious. Stealth scanning is commonly used by hackers for this reason. Now, what are the difference between TCP and UDB? Now we learned that we have TCP connect, UDB, still scanning, TCP half open, SYN, SYN act, what is that? We will talk about it right away. TCP and UDB are the two most common protocols used for the IB networks or the internet protocol networks. TCP or transmission control protocol is a nice orderly transaction protocol. TCP sends each bucket in order, complete with error checking, verification, and a three-way handshake to confirm each packet is successful, which is the SYN, SYN ACK, and ACK. Now I'm assuming that you have a simple idea of how TCP works. Okay, so I will move on. Now UDB doesn't have any error checking, but tends to be faster. And live stream, streaming and online video games often use UDB for this reason, because it is faster. UDB is a connectionless protocol, so programs that use UDB just send the data and if you miss a packet, you will never get it again because it is a connection list. There are no three-way handshaking as we learned from here. The sin, sin, act, act. Okay. So that's why it is faster and connection list. Now, again, I'm assuming that you are familiar or have a simple idea. What is the TCB? What is the UDB and how they works? Okay. In a nutshell, let's say. So if you are not, please, you can just Google it at how TCB works. Just read the simple article it's no big deal what we need here is 
you need to have a, just a, a simple idea how TCP works. The three the three way handshaking, verification, checking, the connection list, and the difference between TCP and UDP. Just as simple as that. Just type difference or TCP versus UDP and read a simple article and you will be fine. What is Nmap? Nmap is a network scanner utility used for port scanning, host discovery, and vulnerability scanning. Most of its functions are based on using IP packet analysis to detect and identify remote hosts, operating systems, and services. Nmap is used by large companies as well as smaller size organizations for port auditing, host monitoring, ventilation testing, and similar tasks. Now, even with Nmap constantly being updated with the new features since decades, its core function remains as a port scanner, helping users gather data by sending packets to local or remote ports. This is done by waiting for packet responses to determine if ports are closed, open, or filtered. The most popular method of using Nmap is via the terminal command line console by performing Nmap full scan command. Now, don't worry, we will handle all of that in the hands-on in this course. Okay, now it's time to prepare the environment. The first thing, we want to download and install VirtualBox. So, from Google, download VirtualBox. Go to the downloads. And from here, choose the version you want regarding the platform you want. So, Windows or, or Host, OS X, for Mac, Linux, Distribution, Solaris, and so on. In my case, I am using Ubuntu. So, I will choose Linux Distribution. And I will have Ubuntu 20, which is this one, okay? And then after you install it, just follow the instruction, as you can see from here. And you can just install it as simple as that. The same thing for OS X, the Mac, the Mac, and the same thing for Windows, okay? Now, this is the first thing. Now, the second thing, we want Kali Linux, okay? Now, by the way, we can install nmap for windows or for mac or for ubuntu by the way but actually for you as ethical hacker it's better to have kali linux because kali linux is an operating system used for ventilation testers and ethical hackers okay so yeah it is better to have kali linux installed so from here you can go to the kali linux downloads and from here i want to choose a live boot which is this one and here you can download it, which is 3.7 gigabyte, which is Kali Linux 2021. Okay, or torrent, torrent, and you have the sum just in case to make sure that you have the right distribution or the right ISO file. Okay. Now, the second thing, or the third thing, actually, not the second, we want to have an environment to test the Nmap on. So we want to scan the port, the host, vulnerability, and so on. So actually, it's better to have a local machine or a testing machine for that purpose, not to test on a live target like Google.com or Amazon or whatever. No, actually, this is bad. So we will have Metasploitable. Okay, so from here, Metasploitable, you can download it from SearchForge, or you can have it from Rabbit7, which is this one. Okay. But of course, you need to provide information, name, email, the company you're working with. You can put arbitrary values, by the way. Okay? So you don't need to register and all of that. Okay? Now, after VirtualBox is downloaded and installed, now we want to have Kali Linux operating system. Now, you may ask me, but why we need Kali Linux? Because by default, it has the Nmap already there. Okay? And by the way, as again, we are as ethical hackers, we have to learn the right way, which is using a Kali Linux, because this is used mainly by ethical hackers, okay? Or hackers generally. So from here, open the virtual box, new, and let's name it Kali or Kali Linux. And here you can choose Linux and let's choose other 64, okay? And you can choose next, put it as much as you want. By the way, 512 megabytes will be enough. But in my case, I have a lot of um, RAM on my laptop, so I can put 2 gig no problem. And here you can create a hard disk. Next, next, next. I In my case, I will put it as 50 gigabytes. Or no, actually, it's better to have it as 
20 now it depends on your hardware again because i have a lot okay now this is the first step now here let's go to the setting while i'm choosing kali linux let's go to the network make sure it is a bridge adapter and make sure you are using the adapter that you want in my case this is the wi-fi not the ethernet and then go to the storage so here choose the empty and choose the disk file and choose kali linux okay which is this one and press ok now after this is done let's click on start and as you can see it will select we want to select the kali linux 2021 which is this one and let's start and here in my case i want i can put live you can just run it as live or you can just start the installer which is this one i will choose english continue united state continue now for the host name choose carry or whatever you want domain name leave it as empty the full name for the new user because by default carry doesn't support the root by default so you need to put a user here so in my case i can put kali username for your account kali it will be and it will be kali the kali one two three four five six now i know it's simple just this is for the sake of this course okay this is this the password by the way you need to provide a secure password this is just arbitrary password for the sake for this course okay now if you got stuck on the configure the network part make sure that you have the NAT first from here from the setting return it back to the NAT then after it is done you can return it back to the bridge now why we need the bridge not the NAT because we want to be on the same network okay so the Cal Linux will be will have a uh, an IP address on the same network of the metasploitable machine which is that we want to use for testing okay don't worry we will handle that right away continue continue and you can choose um either separate or all files in one you know for in our case we don't we, it doesn't matter so continue and finish just and yes continue okay now you will see you see this use a network mirror and choose yes continue continue now you will see that install the grub bootloader yes and um you can uh, choose this device which is the main device which is our main device continue now the installation is complete now let's select the first one here's let's put the user that we created previously kali and the password is Kali123456. Now we have the Kali Linux is ready. So from here, let's go to the full screen. Yeah, I think this is better. And from here, if I click on it. So here, if I type ifconfig, you can see that this is the IB address, which is inside the NAT network. So from here, from the machine setting to the network and select bridge adapter press ok if i type ifconfig again you will can notice that it is still the same problem so for for that ifconfig down to the ef0 or actually it's f0 down and of course you need a sudo permission so sudo this and kali123456 so you can notice that if I type ifconfig again for this, you can see that the network is down. So you will notice that, yeah? So again, up. sudo ifconfig. I actually think I must... Yeah, I think it's better to increase the font size. So sudo ifconfig f0 up. Okay, like that. So sudo ifconfig. You can see that now we have the IP address, which is this one which is inside the network and this is what we want by the way you can see that nmap is here right as you can see nmap is here 
and by the way if you don't like the op opacity like this just from here from the file the preferences from the cat here from here from the application transparency put it to zero and apply you can see that now there are no transparency at all and you can change and by the way you can change the the color so from here green on black if you like this actually i prefer this because it is it's not just like i am talking i am hacker or something no no to feel that like that no actually it's better for your eyes or at least for my eyes i think this is better comfortable for my eyes okay now the next step we want to prepare the environment we want to download and install the metasploitable or or we already download it so we want to install it so we can test and map against it in the next lectures okay now after we prepared the Kali Linux, we want to prepare the Metasploitable, which is the machine that we want to run the Nmap against to test port scans, vulnerability, host discovery, and, and all of that. So from the Metasploit, make sure you are downloaded the Metasploitable 2, okay, which is you already downloaded. Now from here, new, name anything. So let's name it Metasploit or Metasploitable 2. And choose Linux, choose other Linux 64. 512 megabyte will be enough. Create, next, next. Yes, 8 giga is enough, or more than enough actually. Now click on the setting for this machine. Make sure it is a bridge adapter. And from the storage here, so actually we want to remove this and we add, we want to add a new hard disk. So from here, add it, add. So let's choose it. Yeah, the VMDK file here. Choose it and click choose. So you can see that we only have this one and the empty. So we have this one and it adds a primary device zero. Click OK and just start it as simple as that. Now after it is booted, you can see that it is only CLI command line or a terminal. And it will ask for a login, username and password. By the way, you can find them on the same Rabbit 7, which is the MSF admin, which is this one. So if I go here, MSF admin, and again, MSF admin, you can see that now we are logged in as MSF admin. And if you type IF config, you can see that, yeah, we are inside the same network, which is what we want. Now here, the environment is ready. Now we have the virtual box inside it. We have Kali Linux, the attacking machine or the, the machine that has an map that we want to run the scanning techniques and all of that. We will handle it right away in the next lectures. And we have the test machine or the hacked machines that we want to run an map against it to test, scan, check the vulnerability, host discovery and, and all of that. So you will not run that on a live machines or or live targets, which is bad practice or bad thing, you may get in trouble. Okay. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next lecture. We will start handling the Nmap scanning. Okay. Now, the first thing, boot the Metasploitable and Kali Linux, and we will start. Now, if I type ifconfig inside Metasploitable, you can see this is the IP that ends with 110. And here, Inside the Kali ifconfig, it ends with 109. Okay, cool. Now, the first thing we will use nmap utility and the IP address, which is 1168.8.110, which is 110 for the Metasploitable machine. So, if I type like this, you can see that nmap simply with IP address, it will give me all of the open ports and in my case here you can see the ftp as such telnet and a lot of and a lot of um, ports the same thing if i want to do for a host name but don't do this actually so for example google.com and if i press enter so nmap the ib nmap the host name google.com amazon.com cloudflare wh whatever but actually don't do this on a live target because you may get in trouble. Now, of course, not just simple Nmap scan 
it will get you in trouble but it's better to do that on a local machines or test machines now you can see google.com has 443 HTTPS and HTTP open only okay okay now it's time to talk about how to detect hosts you will use the Bing scan technique so on map dash s and p is capital and you this time we want to provide the range or the subnet of the ips so 8.0 slash 24 like this so s means or stands for service and the service would be p which means bing it will send icmp packets and i it is internet control message protocol i recommend you to read more about it the type of the packets echo reply echo request and so all of that just a simple article will do the job okay and press enter now this will start scanning the whole network inside or the whole network for this specific range okay so in my case i found four hosts are up as you can see this is the first host the second host which is this is for the kali linux kali machine oh sorry i this this is for the my meta exploitable machine this is for the kali linux machine this is some machine on the network and this is for the router okay okay now it's time to scan all the ports by default when we run the end map this one okay remember when we run it like this it will scan the first 1000 board so in my case i don't need that or one specific boards in my case i need to scan all of the boards how to do such a thing the same command but this time let's increase the font size a little bit this time it will be dash p dash like this and you can see it will take longer time okay this time it scanned and find that there are other boards like these ones as you can see so it scanned all the boards by the way we have other options or other shortcuts like dash p one slash which means one from one to um six five five three five like this it will do the same job so either to provide the board range or to put it like this dash b dash okay p stands for board it's simple or you want just to check if the board 80 board for 443 the https is open so you can put that like this 80 slash or sorry comma then put 443 or put 112 for example okay so it will start scanning only these three ports so as you can see the 80 is open the 443 HTTPS is closed and the 112 is closed all right okay now how to scan multiple IPs we can do this and map put the first command or the, the first IP I mean and put the second IP okay so I want to scan the meat exploitable machine and my machine the Kali machine like this these are the boards for the first machine which is the meat exploitable and the reports for our machine or the Kali machine is all host the host is up but all the 1000 scanned boards on this are closed again you can put another command which is dash p dash so it will scan all the boards for these two machines let's wait a little bit so you can see that the first machine or the first uh, the first target which is this one these are the ibs or the boards opened and all of the boards as you can see all of the board range are closed okay to scan the top boards okay so we will use this command dash dash top dash boards and we want to put the number of boards so 100 top boards and for the IP address of my machine the meat exploitable which is this one so you can see that it will start scanning the first 100 top boards including these as you can see by the way so if I change this to top 1000 top 10,000 and so on you can see that the number will be increased so here 
the one unknown but here we have this msg sr vr whatever okay okay now it's time to start using and looking for a specific ip address now if i open my terminal if i type if config you can notice that this is my ip address so actually let's um increase this font size this yeah i think this is better and you can see that this is my IP address. So I want to filter the packets that being recorded here or being captured here. I want to filter them to only show that that these packets have this IP address. Okay. So I want it from here. Apply the display filter. IP dot adder. And by by the way, you can see that it is very um, elegant. You can see that it will start showing you uh, some suggestions and whatever. So if I click in it, so IB dot adder, which is address, equal, equal this IB address, okay, which is this one, my IB address. So if I type enter, okay, and here I want to bing google.com, for example. So if I type bing google.com, you can see that it will start showing all the packets that has this IB address. So here, the source is like this. The destination is like this. Here, the source is like this. The destination is like this. So you can see every packet, even this one, as you can see this one, you can see that it has the IP address that we put it here. Okay? Now, what if I want to put it depends on the source or destination. How to do that? Now, we will talk about this in the next lecture. Okay, now, to save up to a file, so unmap, dash o and capital and put the ip address we want sorry i have to put output dot text for example and you can see that if i type here we have output dot text so if i type output dot text yeah you can see that all of the result will be here in, in this file so we can use dash o and capital like this so let's increase the font size a little bit so out with the text and here is the ip address and we can put an instead of an x and here instead of the text xml so if i type here cat output dot xml we can see that this time it is in the form of xml now it depends on what your needs now it's time to disable the dns and that's to speed up your scanning so nmap dash n we'll use dash n and the ip address we want to scan so here without dash n by the way this will work fast because this machine is within the network we have so without dash n it is much longer so we will use dash n so if i type man and map or unmap hill and put dash n you can see that this is to never do the ns resolution always resolve okay now here nmap dash a so if you see man and map here dash a capital and we will use it with t4 so dash a here actually to enable os detection and virgin detection skip scanning and transrupt so let's test it out and map dash a on one two one six eight one one zero for the meter exploitable and you can see it is taking longer but it give us every details possible that needed so you can see that there are a lot of information the version of the ftb for example here and we have anonymous ftb allowed whatever okay so you can see that there it will start detecting the versions and the os used there now but it is taking longer so to to make it faster t4 type the t4 option as you can see now to get the version we can also use this command nmap-s v v 
the capital and put the IP address that we want to scan like this sorry about this I have to put dot here and this uh, will give us the version as well so actually if I remove the dash SV you can see that it will give us port state and service but with dash SV port state service and version so you can see that FTP but what which version this is the version as such which version this is the as such and Debian open to whatever okay okay now it's time to run the using tcp or udb so nmap as simple as that s for service t for tcp or u capital t is capital or u capital by the way for udb so t and let's put the ip address so this is will scan so this will scan tcp ports only and using the u capital here this will scan on udb but you can see that it needs root privilege so sudo shift one shift one like that so you can see it's still working because it will it will take a longer time okay now it's time to talk about the nse scanning vulnerabilities cde or common vulnerability exposures so the command will be nmap we will use dash p capital n now this is it will assume that all hosts are online so it will disable the host discovery by the way if you type man and map and slash bash p n like that you can see that it will treat all hosts as online and it will skip host discovery okay so and map dash p capital n and here we will put dash dash script now this is used with the nse the nmap scripting engine so here you can choose or use the script that you have created using the lua or the lua language so vuln and the target now this vuln it will scan for for vulnerabilities and this is a script used and created to scan for vulnerabilities so like that put the ib address in my case it will be 105 the ip address has changed by the way it's okay no problem and press enter by the way this will take a lot of time because you can see that the progress is moving a little bit now i already make a scan for the metasploitable 2 machine which is this one and you can see in my case it took 9 minutes and 30 seconds so here we can see that we are using the ftb and you can see the FTP version is vulnerable and it has a backdoor. So as you can see, it is exploitable using this CVE. So which means that we are in a wrong. So this FTP server must be upgraded. By the way, this is a metasploitable too after all. It is deliberately used to be hacked or to be vulnerable after all okay so you can see that there are other vulnerabilities like here we can see in the ssl there are some problem whatever okay and if i keep scrolling down you will notice that we have the film problem um, tcb uh, i think the you can see that the apache server has problems whatever as you can see so you can see that it's scanned for vulnerabilities and this what makes nmap a very powerful tool okay now it's time to talk about the dos attacks denial of service now nmap thanks to the nse then nmap scripting engine we can use this tool as dos tool by the way don't use that to harm others use it to help your companies organization whatever in a good ways okay and to harden your system okay so it will use it will be used like that nmap and we will use it on this board or on or, the, or this ib i mean this host okay we will use dash p n we will use dash dash script and we will use the dos the slow loris attack and this is very common a uh, type of dos attacks and it's very powerful by the way because you cannot distinguish between the real attacks and the real users because after all it is http request right so slow 
loris and dash dash script args because we want to put arguments and we will put the http dash slow loris dot run forever equal true by the way this will be very exhaustion for our machine so we have to put something before it which is the max parallelism so dash max dash parallelism so it will be like that and press enter and by the way this will keep running until exhausting the machine we are hosting which is the metasploitable machine so after a, a long time you will notice that the http server there when you go to you when you go to your browser and put this ip you will notice that it will become slower and slower which means that the attack worked so if you keep press enter you will see that two percent is done like that as you can see now nmap is very powerful you can see that it has the brute force utility so nmap dash dash script and you can choose as i provided in the theory part we can have a brute force attack against wordpress sql and ftp server so in my case i will choose it on ftp server so ftp dash root and the ip address of the machine which is the metasploitable machine so if you press enter it will work but it's better to have dash p option which is the port and put the 21 which is the port for the ftp server so like that so nmap dash dash script ftb root dash p it will be 21 for the ftb and the ip address for the host or the machine now actually it will take longer time so for now as you can see it is not moving at all but with that you can brute force the ftb if it is vulnerable by the way but this will take longer time you know that because it is brute forcing after all so it will take a lot of time by the way the brute force attacks is not the modern way to do the hack to be honest because unless you have a supercomputer don't do the brute force at all well at least that's my opinion why is that because it will take forever that's it as simple as that okay now to do to detect a malware on your site or on the site so we will use this so nmap dash dash script and it will be http dash malware dash host and then put the ip address of the machine which is like that okay and it's better to have nmap dash s a small v capital which is to service as to virgin to get the virgin of the machine and you can see that it start scanning and we got the following results so you can see that here there are some information and you can see that the, this rcrpc bind is somehow vulnerable or whatever okay well i'm not saying that nmap is 100 percent accurate but it is one of the best tools you can find out there after all for you as ethical hacker or as a hacker you need to write your own tools depends on the targets you are attacking of course i'm not saying about black hat things i'm talking about white hat things to protect your organization or the companies or organization you are protecting or you are working with now other ways actually is to use the google malware detection so dash dash script it will be google it will be http i mean dash google dash malware and instead of typing the h dash sv which we will use the dash p which is port 80 okay or we can put it as that it will do the job so like that and press enter by the way you can see that because you are we are using a local machine and this is not accessible from the world so let's put another machine here or another ib so let's put amazon.com for example because amazon is a competitor for google i'm just kidding by the way so here you can see that it will show us something like that so actually it's better to have a public ib instead domain because 
you know we have a load balancers and all of that stuff so here you can see it didn't detect any malware or whatever 